GT Holidays, South India's biggest travel brand, presents the Galata Plus Mega Hindi Roundtable 2023. Location partner Nomi, located at Viradesa Road, Andhiri West. It's an authentic Middle Eastern place with beautiful boho vibe. GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Max Mania sale under 499. Rush to your nearest Max Fashion Store now. Hello everyone and welcome to the Galata Mega Hindi Roundtable 2023. Happy to be the first person <laughs> to have you on a roundtable. Yes. Yes. Thank How you. How does it feel? Find I'm, it hard I'm, to believe. I'm, if you had no, to choose very between excited. this and a Padmashri, which would you choose? <laughs> Padmashri? I, I love you, but yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. yes. oh, okay, right. Yeah. So, but thanks was, for having us. Yes. We're very yes, happy to be you. here. We're very no, honored. no, thank you for coming. We were supposed to have another person with us here. Very good actor, great actor, Nawazuddin Siddiqui. Unfortunately, he is unwell. So I thought we'd start with a little homage to him, if, if you will. Oh. Uh, uh, in the sense that one of the, the reasons I wanted to call him to this roundtable is because he played a trans woman in Haddi, right. this film called Haddi, which was actually a riveting watch simply because it had him and Anurag Kashyap in the movie, like starring what? in the movie. So it was like, wow. Oh, I didn't know so, uh, yeah. you saw? Uh, so one of the questions I was going to ask him is, what is the process of transforming yourself into this, this character that is, you know, not you? So I thought I'd just ask you guys to kind of, you know, tell me which is the one role. Uh, I'm sure there have been many probably, but if you had to pick one role where it was a little out there and you had to do a lot of research and it took a lot of time to get into the skin of the character, which would that be? Abhishek, you begin since it's the... No, no, no. no, no, yeah. no, no, no it's, it's ladies it's, first. No, no, no. I'll hear what they have to say and then try and think <laughs> and of... And it's, and try it's and think of I'm, I'm very bad at intellectualizing my work. I, I can't yes. speak. It's very difficult. Aap, aap I really is. want to hear you speak though <laughs> today. I, yeah. I'm so nervous, I've forgotten the question also. Vikrant will start. Why don't we go Vikrant with that? We we'll start with say. Coco. We'll start Aray, with my guys. director. Is this what we're doing? This is I'm yeah. just, this yeah, is just start. This is not so round, just... round robin, this is round table. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, just, First yeah. of all, there's nothing round or table like about <laughs> there's it. Nothing. There's no table. It's, it's a figure of speech. All right, okay. Yeah, yeah. A, yeah. I'll just start just to start this thing. Uh, you know, I think that for me, what happened was that in Mr. and Mrs. Ayer and in Omkara, I was playing characters who are very different from me. So those are the first two films where I found that really one has to do it. Because you know when you're playing an urban yeah, character yeah. who's close to you, your, you know, your milieu, then it's not as much work. But for Omkara particularly, because I had to learn that UP, Western UP dialect, it was very tough for me. And uh, this one also, and Gili Puchi. Uh, but mm. I found that look tests are so helpful. Mm. Because you know, when it's, uh, somebody had described it as like outside in. No, so whatever you are, there's no one right path for anything in life, but that was a very useful thing. Uh, one is when the, di if there's a dialect or something, or if the physicality is very different, like I discovered that there is a man inside me, no, which mm. came out in Gili Puchi. Mm -hmm. We right. thought it would be a different kind of man and different kind of a man came out, but a man came out. <laughs> right. So right. these two, I would say, these right. two. And Gili Puchi, why exactly? Because of this aspect of it. Yes, because, I mean, you know, I'm neither Dalit nor queer. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, hopefully one day we'll come to a place where we will be able to cast, you know, people from within their communities. But in this particular case, Neeraj himself is Dalit. We had a lot of, uh, you know, queer community folk in our unit. Uh, so that was also hugely helpful. And uh, also because for the first, it was very liberating for me because I was wearing those overalls. I was very comfortable. It's like, you know, it's a jumpsuit. Yeah. And, um, you know, I never had to, first time I wore my hair curly. And I didn't really have to worry too much about hair, makeup, and I could, you know, slouch and be like this. Because I was saying this earlier as well, that many times, especially in, you know, some uh, more, um, not mainstream, but in many films, one has to be hyper femme, actually. Lots of hair, lots of like, I don't know, just like elements of femininity is often exaggerated in a way which it is not in real life. Right. Like in real life, it's not like I feel female or any gender all the time, you know, you forget sometimes. Mm. So, I would say these for me. Now will you say? Yeah, now he'll say. What? Now <laughs> it's your will, turn. Will you will you kind of talk about? <laughs> um, I I don't know. No, very honestly. Um, okay. I, but was there a role that you just found it a little difficult to get into? Yeah, I still don't have an, a proper, as qualified an answer as she does. But actually, um, yeah, I I have something related to that. I remember very early in my career reading an interview she had done. I think after Mr. and Mrs. Ayer, where you're saying, I'm done with learning accents. And and for the first time, I realized that, oh my God, people are working really hard. <laughs> and 
you idiot, what are you doing? You know, I used to just show up. And my approach at the, at the start of my career was one of just wanting to learn um, for various different reasons. My, my training was, um, today I say, unfortunately, very Western because I was in a British boarding school and then I went to an American college where I trained. And so my entire training was very Western and I came back here and wanted to work here. And off the bat on my first film realized that you need to be very rooted to be able to speak to the audience over here. And the first advice my father gave me, and I think the only one which sadly I didn't listen to, he said, you know what, before you start, just go spend three months in Allahabad. I'm like, why? He's like, you'll understand the language. If you don't know the language, if you don't feel the language, if you don't think in the language. So I used to just lean on my directors because um, as most uh, children will tell you, your parents always tell you what to do and then you'll go figure out what you need to do by yourself. Mm -hmm and until you don't do it by yourself. So I, I just lent on my directors and said, okay, I'm going to submit to them completely and whatever they say. So I never really did much of this. Mm. Um, and as time went and with experience, um, you start obviously contributing slightly. So for, for me, my journey was very, very different. Today, I value prep. I value the time um, a producer gives you before you get onto the floor. Um, and I completely agree with that. I think for me, um, the look test is something that just puts those blinkers on. Mm. Um, and I think it's, it's very important in film to be able to see your character physically. Uh, and for me also, if once I get cracked the walk of the character, the gait of the character, that helps. These are the things I started doing now. Um, there are a lot of films which today I regretfully say that I wish I had the same approach then so that I could have, you know, possibly um, enhanced. But um, I, 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 I'm just about starting to do that kind of prep and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So to name any particular film would uh, be very difficult for me. So I'll let Bhumi answer that. Okay. But you've been doing such a great job that nobody... Yeah. Has. So nothing yeah. to do with me. So, no, seriously, I, I have no qualms in saying it. It's completely due to the directors. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Uh, obviously, my first film, but during Dam Laga Ke Haisha, I did everything that I was told. I don't think there was a lot of my, okay, Bhumi, do this, do that, maybe go research her. Again, she was a girl that's so away from my being. But I feel like the first time that I actually went really out of my comfort zone and not just physically was Son Chidiya because Abhishek Chaube also as a director is somebody who really can push you into a corner because that's what that part needs. So it wasn't just like physical transformation, it was also like me getting my fitness levels high. I remember I would walk around Aram Nagar for three hours barefoot with a matka on my head with like 10 kgs around my arm because that's what I had to do in the film. You know, through the film we were on a chase. And uh, obviously, you know, learning all the weapons and all the physical fighting and all of that was fun and very, very liberating. But the fact that I also had to understand that I'm playing a girl that is so... She has no rights. She has no freedom. She is very away from the liberated, independent person that I am. Yeah. So I had to unlearn a lot. I had to kill my ego, kill my self-respect to be able to become that person. And I feel another part that really kind of shifted something within me as an actor was what I did in uh, Sand Kiak. Because mm. for me, that honestly was... It was such a wholesome feeling because that was a tribute to my grandmom. And there were so many of her aspects that I put into. And I just, I'd lost her maybe a year before I started prepping for San Kia. So whatever I could remember of her, because uh, the character that I played is Haryanvi, you know, she, um, and I've seen, I've seen the culture very closely. I didn't speak the language. That was one opportunity that I got to actually learn my native language, which was very, very cool. Um, um, you know, just the being. So I remember when my mom saw Sanki Ark, she actually was so moved because she could see like parts of her mom, just like in the mannerisms, which was probably the greatest compliment that I've received in my career. So for me, Sanki Ark is very, very special. Nice. Yeah. You, sir. 
Sir, I actually don't know because uh, I'm still figuring it out. But if I am to talk about the work that I've done so far, sometimes it is characters that are really far away from you. Yeah. But also at the same time, there are some characters which are so close to you that, that are equally challenging. Mm. Uh, for example, Shuntu, which we created together. So much of Shuntu is a lot of what I am, a lot of what Coco is. Uh, but it was still the most challenging part that I played. It was also very close to me, maybe because of that. Uh, but I'm really not able to sort of, even yet, even after five years, I don't know what exactly was challenging, but it was. Uh, sometimes there are characters which are really far away from you. For example, Mirzapur. I, I don't come from Mirzapur. I have very extensively travelled India. I know that world very well, but I haven't lived in that socio-economic setup. Like, a research, a 10-day, 12-day trip is, is good enough, it's a good kickstart, but you really haven't lived there, so you don't know. And the world of crime is really far-fetched from where I come from. So, it totally depends. I still don't have a definite answer to it. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad that I've had characters that have pushed me against the wall. Uh, but I, I don't know which character really, really sort of challenged me. I think I would also speak about Criminal Justice, right. uh, a web series I did for Disney Hotstar. Uh, fortunately, never been in a jail. Uh, so, But it was tough to sort of imagine myself there in that setup. And that is where the director and the prep and a lot of things come into play. Right. So it, it totally depends, you know, I, I don't know, actually. Yeah. I do feel that actors also have to be a little flexible yeah. because, you know, we work on different projects with different directors and different directors have different styles. Right. Yeah. Some are very particular and specific, some don't want to do any rehearsal or prep, some leave it to you, you know, others are... So it's nice but to be able I to be flexible. I feel like film to film, our method also changes. Absolutely. Evolves, right? Yeah. Like over time I realized earlier, I was like, I went by the book. Okay, this is what I was taught and you know, this is the method that I'm going to use. But over time you evolve and you realize that you don't have to stretch yourself that thin every time. Right. You can't exhaust yourself because there's so much and you know, there's just a lot of work that we all do like within a short period of time. So I also kind of, I've learned to preserve myself which I just, I just didn't have the skill to do that early on. Right. You know, if it's just that, like, oh... It's kind of like pick your battles? I think so. Yeah. You know, because every film does not need that. And obviously the director really aids you over there. Because that's when you realize, because I've been told that, no, you're going too deep. <laughs> like, okay, maybe I should just like... Chill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's no one size fits all actually. Yeah, absolutely. There's no one size fits all. Yeah. No, I, the, the reason I asked was also because, you know, sometimes you get a really good insight, like just what you said, which is some like somebody like an outsider would not really get, which is like the the normal thing that one would think is the toughest thing to do is to play a character so far away from mm. you, but now you're saying that Shuto was so close to you and yet something about that character was in Death in the Gunch was, was, was really tough to play and that's interesting because it gives, even if we don't know why, that's, that's, that's a nice insight yeah, to so, have. Some, sometimes, yeah. sometimes you identify with your character so well but the execution is, is something which is very challenging. Mm. Like Shutu for that matter of fact or even, even Manoj Kumar Sharma in 12th mm. film. Uh, I think like Manoj, my life approach is like Manoj but I, I really haven't seen that kind of poverty. Uh, I don't know their day-to-day -day struggles. I don't know what they go to sleep with in their minds. Right. I, I've only touched it very briefly though. So, as I said, that's where the director and your, your prep comes in. And I extensively prep, so that kind of really, really helps. So, Vikrant, now that you've mentioned 12th fail, congratulations. Thank you've you. had... Yes, yes. Yeah. It's wonderful. Like, uh, so, so exciting. So brilliant. It's, it's one of those big box office hits, commercial, critical hit. Uh, what's... Why aren't you smiling more? What, what's, what's, what's so like, uh, you know, that's, uh, because, you know, I'll, I'll tell you something. It's, uh, you've had successes on t television, like series and stuff like that. You've had OTT successes like Mirzapur, very talked about uh, things. Finally, you get this huge solo mm. uh, starring hit. Look, there's the smile. Yeah. It's, it's kind of surly. <laughs> so, uh, what's that like? It's very surreal, sir. Uh, it's, it's like, it's like tasting something you've been cooking for really long. But uh, I also know 
and probably because of my my experience of nearly 20 years i know the transient nature of the world that we are in yeah. so as much as i want to cherish the success uh, the idea is to also recognize that the journey actually begins now um, it gets far more challenging mm. uh, and to be consistent is the idea i think uh, that's the thing you know i as much as i am really happy with the way people have responded to the film they've embraced it in so many ways and i can use this word very proudly because uh, we even we, we we said it during promotions that ye sabhi is desh ye sab ki kahani hai and there is a large chunk of people in our country uh, that identified with manoj kumar sharma and the world that he belonged to but having said that i also know as i said that the idea is to you know restart and put blinkers on again focus again because it is nothing if i do not back it up with consistency yeah. right so uh, people have moved on already uh, so have i but my entire focus is on what i do next uh, not necessarily better it but at least land somewhere close to what manoj kumar sharma is when i started off with manoj kumar sharma shoot to was my benchmark mm. and i have manoj kumar sharma because there was a konkana who believed in me in 2017 mm. and people took notice of me then the idea has always been to be consistent and uh, yeah and i would want to sort of say it because i won't get an opportunity again to be like mr bachchan to work like him uh, to be as diligent as he is not just be He's happy talking about my father just yes. want to yes. clarify yes 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 before people yes, people. yes. <laughs> With uh, Abhishek, no, no, no. <laughs> it's no. the nemesis of consistency. <laughs> no, I, I really want to say this because consistency uh, is not always in our control. Is not either. in our control. Yeah. Absolutely, but uh, what what I do in front of the camera in in collaboration with my directors and writers, a lot of it is within my control as well. Or how sincerely I sort of yeah. go out there. You really don't know the fate of the film, mm. but yeah. you definitely know what you. Yeah. aspire to do between action and cut yeah. so whether it is the longevity or his work discipline or or you know back it up with consistent performances is what i aspire to do so i'm just 36 and there's still a long way to go nice yeah. everyone is speaking very in a very very <laughs> like yodaish kind of way, you know like <laughs> so a, well said yeah really? there's full of wisdom this 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 room is filled with wisdom <laughs> and uh, you guys that is konkna and Abhishek, you pretty much began around the same time. You were 2000, year 2000, year yes. refugee, and you broke out with uh, uh, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. I, which is 2002, 2003. Mm-hmm. So roughly the same time. Yeah. So which which means about two decades, right? Yes. Now, if you were to pick, I mean, there's been tons of changes in Hindi cinema, right? But if you were to pick one thing that you feel has been the most significant thing that's happened in Hindi cinema, what would that be? That could change. like a change like yeah. a change yeah i think in our industry the biggest change um throughout the country and i think we're just at the start of it is what we were just discussing before is there even in mainstream um commercial cinema there is an element of realism which is coming in and how we manage to find that balance between the realism with the fantastical is the the sweet spot that we need to hit but there was an element of heroism there was a requirement of how a heroine should turn around and look into the camera flicking a hair these were almost prerequisites and it's just what we did so a lot of our acting had to be done according to you acted for the camera today i feel the audience as well but the actors also have been brought up on a steady diet of world cinema so there's an exposure to all different types of acting and i feel today there's less emphasis on acting for the camera um a couple of years ago i was doing a film with anurag where he had he always had two cameras on set and one was in front of you and the other nobody knew where it was he used to hide it and it was the first time i worked in a setup like that I mean this I, was Manmarzia. Yes. Oh. And that's uh, and, wild. Yeah. yeah He's just don't the camera's not there don't worry. And it's the first time and you know 
in that respect, I was old school. I'm like, no, no, but I need to know the cameras, where's the light. It's very technical. Right. And today I feel there's a lot more freedom of movement that has come in. Mm. And that affects our performances a lot. Where I'd like to believe, and I hope um, it comes true in entirety, where actors are not as conscious in front of the camera of their off-screen image, which is what we were all brought up to be very conscious of. This is the kind of film you should do, this is what you shouldn't do, this is how you have to look, uh, consistency of look. I mean, uh, in, in the 90s and early 2000s, when my generation was coming in, it was about, okay, I mean, it wouldn't be correct of me, to, it's, I'm Abhishek Bachchan, and you have to be Abhishek Bachchan in every film. Mm. Or there has to be an element of that. And I never understood that when I first came in, because like I said, I, my, my approach was very different. So I, I had to grapple with that in my initial couple of films. Mm. And the first two directors who actually empowered me to, to say, no, no, you don't need to do what you have to do were, were Ram Gopal Verma and, and Mani. Just be the character. And I think what's really nice today with the advent of satellite television and you know, digital streaming sites, which we for some weird reason called OTT. Yeah, uh, makes no sense. Yeah, what does it even anyway, mean? No, what over, does it stand I actually over don't know. Over thought. the top, but I, yeah, yeah, it, it makes, makes no sense. sense. But anyway, sure. um, what does it mean? I think what's happened is that the push of a button, your audience is privy to all different kinds of content. So there is a certain equality that's coming in, in terms of, but for mm. us in India, we have to find that the balance between, like I said, the realism and the fantastical. Because our, our storytelling heritage and legacy is that. Right. It's larger than life. Mm -hmm. Even if you have these huge commercial, uh, you know, box office bonanzas in, in the, say, the coming, that, that's happened. If you just recently had Animal, you have Jawan, Ghadar, you've had Patan, all these kind of films. The, if you see the, the actors are, are leaning towards, in, within the, the commercial boundaries, they're still leaning towards a certain believability right. um, of the characters, which I think is, is, is nice. It's a lot of fun. We shouldn't lose our cinema and our, our identity because that's what, I mean, I grew up on that. I love it. Right. But I like the fact that there's a certain realism that's coming in. There's an authenticity that is expected of the actors. Those, those days are not too far away where any actor um, who's not going to be both feet jumping into the deep end, uh, into the character, is going to be accepted. What used to happen previously was they were far more forgiving because, first of all, that was the only option the audience had. Actors were doing multiple films at the same time, so they could not dedicate themselves. I mean, I remember as a child spending a lot of time on my father's sets, and I remember seeing, you know, I mean, literally him doing four shifts in a day, you know, and at that point in time, how are you going to submit to a character? So it was more about the star at that point of time. Now it's about the role. Within the framework of being a hero, can you still be real and authentic to the role? So I think that's the biggest change I've noticed. You know, actually, now that you mention it, if he was doing four shifts and still giving those performances, mm. that speaks, that's, that's <laughs> actually crazy. even more. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I mean, yeah. he's told me this story, um, which has now become legend, which I love to say because it's just, I find it baffling. Apart from being his son, I'm also his biggest fan. And just, he's, he was telling me a story because I, I was doing a double shift early in my career. I was, and I was, I was, I was tired one day and I, I went home uh, early in the morning. It was a seven to five night shift and the next morning was a nine, nine to nine. So I came home and he was, uh, you know, on the dining table having his breakfast or whatever and getting ready to leave. He said, oh, how was it? He, I said, yeah, I'm really tired. This and he very casually said, oh, you know, uh, we used to do a lot of this. I, I remember I was shooting Shole. I mean, just the fact that he said it so short. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. He's like, we were shooting um, about an hour's drive from Bangalore's where, you know, the Ramgarhka set was. And he said, we used to shoot all day, I used to pack up, I used to drive to Bangalore airport, take a flight, fly to Bombay, go straight to Ballot Pier where we were shooting the climax of Diwar. Mm. And shoot all night in Ballot Pier in, you know, South Mumbai for Diwar, come home, take a shot of adrenaline, go around to the flight and fly back to Bangalore and shoot all day in Bangalore. And he did this for like a month. <laughs> God. So it's not like I'm going from one studio, I'm going from city to city. So I said, when did you sleep? He said, once you took the shot of adrenaline, you, uh, you can't sleep. I used to sleep, uh, you know, on the flight. And then he told me like the, these legendary stories that we hear in the film industry that I think the record for amount of shifts in a day was 11, <gasps> which I think Shashi uncle did. And he had like seven sets on the same, so he used to literally do a shot, remove a shirt, go to the next floor, put it. 
and look at the work these people did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how do you remember continuity of just a character? Forget the physical continuity of the scenes. And this is and it, this was like second nature for them. And I think so I, I mean, it's just it, it, it's baffling. I think that really helps as well. I mean, there is no comparison, but I, I'm a byproduct of television. Mm. So sh sh for us, doing two shifts, three shifts was was pretty normal. Because you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared. Yeah. And we used to call it Garma Garam script because we actually, when Xerox was <laughs> out of the ink, it didn't soak the ink. You never had beyond three takes. Mm -hmm. There were days when you were shooting up until 4 p.m. Your telecast is at 8 p.m. There is a runner which is running back to wow. the offices with segments. Ah. Banking. And they are delivering segment-wise. If it's a good, if, it's, if, it, you, if you've got a bank, you just have a two-day bank. Oh no. And that really, really helped. And when I came on a film set, my first film set was Lutera. And uh, you had this big set, you know, uh, created in like 1952 has been created. It's humongous. There are like 220 people on a film set. And you're just shooting three minutes a day. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you're shooting three <laughs> minutes Amateurs. a day. Amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> we are making a film a week. Yeah. We are making 20 minute episodes every day. And we are almost making a film a week. And yeah. that really, really helped. So the amount of prep time that I got, I gulped it down entirely. And lastly, what Sir said is so fantastic. I'm sure you must have heard of it. Uh, Tom Hanks with uh, Anupama ma'am said it. You know, what is that one thing that an actor needs the most? And he said, lack of self-consciousness. Right. And isn't it outstanding? I think that's the most important thing. So it kind of connects with what Yeah, Sarah see, but said. Tom Hanks never did a song with 50 dancers in, in yeah. Leicester Square in the middle of mm. London. So people look <laughs> at him like, should I throw money at him or should I just laugh or what do we you do? You know, I think, I think, <laughs> are, you, are you talking about Jum Barabar Jum? No, no, no that, I was fine by then. Yeah. No, no I, 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 I had... <laughs> My, my, my second film was a film called Tera Jadu Chal Gaya. Yeah. And, and um, I, I went to boarding school. Great in, soundtrack, by the way. Yeah, yep. beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it was Ismail Darbar's second soundtrack. And um, I, I, I grew up and studied in Switzerland. And to my horror, we were doing a song which the great BH Tarun Kumar was choreographing. And, you know, Tarun Kumar had used that quintessential hero walk in high speed and put on his jacket and... <laughs> We, for some weird reason, had 40 dancers who had come in from Chennai dressed as Roman soldiers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, and, and PVC Roman soldiers. I mean, they, it wasn't like, it was, they were in like vinyl. <laughs> and I'm She's there... She's the idea for her next I, I'm there in a polo neck and like, you know, jeans and an overcoat. And I'm dressed normally and Kirti Reddy was my co-star and she was in a chiffon sari and fainting because it was minus 30. Oh and my God. I just had one thought. I'm like, oh God, please. I beg you, and we were shooting about half an hour from where my school was, in this uh, place called Lady Diablerie, which is where we used to go skiing. And we were shooting in front of the telecabine, which made no sense, because I'm like, what's, ex you know, it's just, you know, those gondolas that people yeah. go out to ski? We were shooting outside that. I'm like, what's in this? But it was very nice, let's go there. In those days, you went to Switzerland and shot in a field. Mm. And that was over. Oh, wow. Beautiful, you know? I mean, anyway, whatever. And I'm just praying that, oh God, please, nobody from my school, show up. <laughs> <laughs> and to my luck, one of my drama teachers walked oh, by no. and he stopped. He's like, and I just turned and bolted from there. <laughs> and then they all, you know, and all these Swiss people were sitting there and they're like, they couldn't understand yeah. that why these two people lip syncing to a song and they're 40 South Indian Romans in PVC at the background, dance, they couldn't understand. At that point of time is when you realize your metal as an actor to be able to pull yourself out of that and get on with it. Joom Barabar Joom was different because first it was Shad, so Shad is mad, so thankfully you're not the maddest person on set. But by then there's a level of confidence, but what was really nice is we were shooting in Waterloo Station. And the normal passengers that were passing by, we were shooting a song, they'd jump in and start dancing as well. So it was, it was fun. But you, self-consciousness, you only know when you're doing a full-on hardcore Bollywood song mm. abroad where people are looking at you like... So, yeah, yeah, like I said, I mean, with all due respect, we love them, but Mr. Hanks, do a, <laughs> do a song in, in the middle of Leicester Square first. But, but you've never done a proper song connect. and dance, right? Sorry. Sorry? No, please, please, please. Yeah. You've never done a, like a proper song and dance thing, right? 
you know, yes, I had she had has. to for that laga chalo. We did it together. Oh, right. And yes. I was rehearsing it. I was the only one who was rehearsing it for I think weeks in advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel you. I know what you mean. Yeah. No, if I have to do a song, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I get so nervous. Yeah. At that time, I did too, and I nobody else was rehearsing because they would come, see the step, and say, ah, whatever dip and whatever something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm rehearsing it like mad for weeks in advance, and you know, I remember middle of the night waking up to go to the loo on the way, passing the mirror and You're quickly dipping. doing a step. <laughs> <laughs> it was so. <laughs> yeah. so, sorry, Vikrant, you were saying something. No, I, I, what I was saying is I absolutely agree with what Sir is saying. But what you also said is you have to carry that that image of an actor even beyond your set. And I connected that lack of self consciousness beyond the set. You know, mm. you what I connected it was that you don't take yourself so seriously beyond the set that you have to be a certain way and make sure that you are a certain way because you are a cinema star. Mm. I don't know if I'm able to put it the right mm. way. I think that that disconnect with the character that you play, or or the or the so-called position that you're in, in front of the audiences you make the films for, that there, there has to be a definite disconnect right. between those two, and that is where the lack of self-consciousness really matters to me right. in that case. Right. But it definitely takes immense gumption to do what you spoke of. It it is very challenging. I have done that, not in Switzerland, but. Mm. I am a dancer, a trained dancer with Shamak Dawar, and I, I, I just could not do it when I was asked to do it, and I, I, I knew it. I'm absolutely horrible at it, and I, I stopped doing that. You like yeah. dancing? Yeah, I mean, I, I am a trained dancer. Mm. I worked with Shamak Dawar. Uh, dancing should come naturally to me, which it did at one point in time. Mm. Yeah. But when I was asked to do it on a set and sort of do it with forty other people, it is extremely challenging. Yeah. I could not do it. It's scary. It's, it's scary. Very it is scary. very, very scary. You mean so like you scary. froze? Like it's, it's. I didn't freeze, but it is not I, comfortable. That's I was not comfortable with yeah. it. Lip syncing, maybe. Yeah. I was not comfortable with the fact that uh, probably I'm not as good as I used to be, uh, because I, com I'm not a trained actor, and I completely focused on what I do in front of the camera. So, we disconnect tha. And it just didn't come naturally to me. So now I know what Sir is talking about. It is it is very challenging. It takes a certain amount of gumption, and you you need to convince yourself before you go out there and convince right, the right, audiences. Right. You need to be convincing to go and do those things, like what Govinda Sir did with oh. Karishma Kapoor or what Jhum Bharabar Jhum. I mean, it's it's right. impeccably challenging. I I I feel you know for for cinema actors. Um, I mean, for me personally, the the scariest thing is the thought of a close-up. I think the big difference between, say, being a trained dancer with Shamak and dancing in a troupe and performing, and then coming onto a, a sound stage and a camera comes up and is right on you. The first thing you think about is, on the other side of that lens, there are some, you know, hundred million people that are going to see this, and if I mess up. It's going to get amplified by the camera. Yeah. I think that's the first thought that just throws everybody off a bit. You well realize that if and if you see if, if you put like he's has a lot of trepidation about it right now. You put him on on a stage show right now, he'll he'll ace it because there's an abandon about it. There's a group energy. There's you're feeding off the energy. The minute a camera comes close to you, it it really throws you off. Absolutely agree with. No, nah? you put me on a stage today. It's a completely different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. right. But you put a Jimmy Jib tracking into me, I won't be able to do it. What is the change you'd pick? One thing I wanted to quickly say because you know while others are talking, you're mm -hmm. thinking. And uh, one thing about the self-consciousness is, uh, yeah, I, I mean, of course, I, that is, I agree and I understand what you're saying. But it's also such a wonderful tool to be self-aware and to be self-observant because I to learn so much about my characters from myself only. Right. Sometimes yeah. I see myself, hey, you're doing this. Now I'm feeling this, you know. Uh, so that has been very useful to use uh, here and there. And you know, big change, it's hard for me to say because uh, my journey and uh, everything has, you know, been very individualistic. So I've not really, I've not grown up on a diet of Hindi films or even uh, commercial Bengali films for that matter. So I've not watched a lot of mainstream conventional films overall. And uh, I've um, not actually, you know, because I, so I've not really kept track in that sense. I'm just saying overall, right. mine has been very individualistic and just like it's been, I don't know, self-centered or whatever, focused inwards. And uh, 
the change of course is that um, OTT. OTT, we don't know what it stands for, we'll find out. But that over because the top. <laughs> over the top. No, it really is. Is it? It's it is. Top. I'm not kidding. That's what OTT used to be before the platforms came. But anyway, regardless, I'm just saying that the platforms did help, especially in the beginning, because I found that, you know, we've been working for two decades plus, and um, I've got far more grayer roles now than I had in the beginning of my career, in the first 10 years, say, or first 15 years. That's one thing. And I think the format changing has really helped as well, in the sense that you don't, you're not only doing like a two hour, two, whatever, two and a half hour. Uh, theatrical mm. so because you know you are doing like uh, limited series or short films or extended series whatever so that format changing has helped the censorship not being there really as much has really helped those kind of things I think uh, and you're working also with varied crew and directors and actors who you may not have worked with if it was only theatrical mm. so maybe that's what comes yeah. to mind first yeah. mm. right now Bhumi in the older generations there was always an element of stereotyping right I feel there's a bit of that even now because like I think that directors think I want a strong, sensible woman mm. and I'm going to cast mm. Bhumi Pendekar in that. Mm. Do you find that? Absolutely. Do you go to that those roles? I mean, do you keep getting scripts like that? I mean, honestly, uh, I react to the material that I read and how excited that content gets me. But there is a lot of stereotyping. At the start of my career, because I started off with Dam Laga Ke Haisha, and thank God, because you know these are phenomenal films. They really changed the course of my life, right. and they were. I also got an opportunity to give a great performance. But I longed doing parts that were closer to the world that I belong to. And uh, with my recent experience with Thank You For Coming, there was it created such a stir and it made people so uncomfortable that I actually got calls where people were like, you know, why are you trying to be this modern, western, urban girl? I was like, I'm not trying to be anybody else. This is who I am. And they're like, yeah, but you know, you're an actor. I said, okay, just because I dress a certain way, that means my credibility as an actor is gone. I was so confused by this narrative that was spun because and and now I understand because a lot of my colleagues, you know, women that have started with uh, maybe films that were not unconventional like mine was, it is they're constantly trying to break that barrier that, oh, because I look a certain way doesn't mean that I can't act. And these are filmmakers that I've worked with. I was like, oh, so suddenly if I'm in a salwar kameez with no makeup, I turn into a brilliant actor. But if I'm dressed the way I am today, I'm unable to perform. So it, it just didn't, I just didn't understand what's happening because as an actor, I want to be diverse. I want to be able to uh, play various kind of women. And <laughs> that's what I strive to do. So it's just like, you know, if I play, if I do a Son Sharia or a San Kia, people are okay with it because it doesn't make them uncomfortable. And you know, after my experience with Thank You For Coming, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to continue doing this. Yeah. <laughs> because eventually you will get used to it because yeah. I've still given, I think I've given a great performance and also kind of coming back to what Vikrant had said earlier, that when you play parts that are closer to you, it becomes more difficult because you're not shielded by those many layers, right? It was just... And, that girl is somebody that I really connected with because her problems are my problems. So I was like, when I read the script, I was like, okay, I, I connect with you, I understand you because I don't often get parts where I get a chance to portray um, the nuances that I experience in my life. And I got a chance to do that with Thank You For Coming because that's my ecosystem. I know the, I know these women and you know, just because like I'm unable to, I'm a single girl in the film who's finding love. It's a real problem. It's a real problem in my life as well. <laughs> you know, why should it be small or big? So many and girlfriends absolutely. Are mine also, yeah. And you know, like all of us, like a lot of single people kind of are looking for love and companionship. We are looking for like equal pay, you know, just because I'm somebody in the film who comes from certain privilege that doesn't make my problems lesser. Yes. Which I thought was such an unfair lens of people to look at things from, right? Because suddenly everything that we were trying to say through the film became unserious right. and not important. You know, it became fluff only because I was dressed a certain way. This was such a big learning because at the start of my career, actually until Thank You For Coming, everything that I did, I felt like, oh my God, I was so shielded. Because people just assume, kya actor hai? Kyunki usme makeup nahi pehna. 
and she put on weight and this and that yeah, and all that. But yeah. I was so padded in those parts. <coughs> Here I was being the closest to myself, and I, I, it was only my conviction in the part that I could portray. I had no padding in Thank You for Coming, and it's very <laughs> tough doing comedy. You know, it's very tough kind of doing physical comedy where you're putting yourself out there, where you're the butt of all jokes. You know, so honestly, for me, that film was so liberating. It was like a massive therapy session. <laughs> where I just connected with myself and I, I just kind of really got rid of just so much pressure that I'd put on myself as a girl. So when you do Beat this year, Bhumi Pednekar is a people great actor. People have forgotten. When you do Afwa, <laughs> Forgotten. Uh, like people think you're, you're a great actor, but when you do Thank You For Coming, it's like, why yeah. are you doing this? It's, it's... I'm like, guys, Bheed and Afwa came three months before Thank You For Coming. If you go, you should watch the film, no? <laughs> yeah. Before giving me like your large, big take, because it's literally the first urban film that I've done. <laughs> and I've longed for those parts because I'm this person, you know, I... When I did a Dam Naga Ke Hai Shaw, any of my films, it's taken me so much work to go away from who I am. I don't think in Hindi. I'm a regular Bombay girl, so I really had to work a lot to become those parts. And honestly, I also feel that's something I enjoy a lot because it's a lot more challenging to me. But to play somebody closer to me makes me feel naked. I feel very, very vulnerable. Because I'm like, okay, these are my personal experiences that I'm putting out there. These right. are not experiences that I've heard of or I have like made in my mm. head. You know, so if there is an insecurity, if in Thank You For Coming, I'm constantly pulling my dress down because I'm conscious, the girl is con constantly conscious of being like, you know, body shamed or being picked on. It comes from a personal experience. But in Dam Laga Ke Haisha, I think I was a lot more confident. You know, because I was like, oh, this is a character that I'm playing and I evolved to be that part. And, you know, the film spoke about many, many other things. But Thank You For Coming was scary. And, you know, to like, to, to have the pressure of look, of looking good is a lot. So hats off to all my contemporaries, you know, who, who've done this time and again, and they've given a great performance. I didn't realize the amount of work it takes till I did it. When you're speaking of looks, I'm reminded of a recent statement of yours. Uh, it, you just said this about two, three weeks ago. You were talking about the pressure it takes to look a certain way yeah. for an actor. Yeah. You said, not in the film, but out of the film. Life. You, you were yeah, talking about, you know, hair and makeup cost this much. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, getting a car cost this yeah. much. You're getting a dress uh, yeah. cost this much. So to attend an event or to, you know, right. do something. Oh God, it, yeah. This yeah. has become a real So this problem. was actually... Yeah. So, this so was, let me we just finish. Yeah. So then we can all chip in, right? It's like, <gasps> a, I, I won't chip in about hair and makeup, but you know, let's just, <laughs> yeah, the other people can. But you mentioned this, but. And as a complete outsider to this world, right? I just want, I'm very curious, what's stopping you from just wearing a nice pair of jeans, a nice t-shirt and saying, uh, this is me and that's so, my, I don't know, I'm, what, what am I what, missing? Yeah. I've had a bit of a journey, yeah. okay? Uh, that statement was specific to uh, the early part of my career where my affordability was nil, right? right. So that year, for during Dam Naga Ke Haisha, where there were like 18 awards and I had to go for all because I was winning, I was like, how the hell do I do this? You know, because every outing went into lakhs and I just didn't want to put that pressure onto my family, right? So that that phase was a lot of fun because my mom and I, we would like literally stitch things up and we would like put things together. So there were like just friends and family that kind of got together. It was like an art project. Every award show or every event that I went for. But from then, that time, it felt like something that I have to do. But over time, I've also really started to enjoy fashion. Now, that's my personal journey. I enjoyed it then as well. But when you are attending a formal event, because people are dressed a certain way, I mean, I didn't have the confidence to just go in a pair of jeans and t-shirt. And also, my aspirations were not to do that. You right. know, why should I lie? Like, when I wanted to be an actor, I wanted all of this. Right. You know, I wanted the interviews. I wanted the fans. I wanted everything because I have grown up watching... Karshma Kapoor perform, Rani Mukherjee, Kajol. I was like, that's what I want. 
So I did whatever was needed and I hustled. That's what I said in my podcast as well. I was like, I hustled and I'm happy I did it because it taught me a lot. But over time, I thoroughly enjoy this because I've realized that I'm that person. I can sit in front of a mirror for four hours and do this. I will not complain because I enjoy it. So today it's not pressure. Today I'm at a position where I command what I want to wear. So if today I actually go dressed in maybe just something that's not the dress code, people are going to accept it. Nobody is really going to tell me anything. But I've reached that place in life. Also with age, with time, with success, you evolve as human beings. I'm way more confident today than I was then. I have a lot of clarity about what my path is, what I'm trying to achieve. At that time, I was just trying to do everything that I was told. Ki, Acha, aap ek event pe ja rahe ho. E, these are the things that you need. And I was like, okay, how do I best make sure that I... Uh, meet these needs. Today I know all of that is bullshit. I do what I want. You said, yeah, that's a real problem. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> this is kind of... So um, I just said that because I find that, so mine is a very recent thing actually because, uh, and it's, I find, because what's happening is that I am finding that there are a lot of, uh, you know, events and then one has to there do. There are too many now. Yeah, or Too maybe many. this is the season. Plus and all then these round tables. Oh my <laughs> God. No, 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 no. Uh, nothing like that. It's just that, you know, like whatever, there are a lot of events. And of course, uh, you know, there are times when they are uh, paid promotional events and sometimes they're not. Uh, uh, but it's just becomes like, I feel like this is not my work. Because I spend an inordinate amount of time pl- <laughs> thinking about, you know, oh, I have to get, you know, the hair, makeup, uh, outfit, stylist, photographer and post it. Oh, this time I have to, oh, apparently 24 hours, I don't have a PR person. So this is taking up a lot of my headspace, which personally I'm not okay with because I have to write. I have a child. I have to, you know, I would rather act and direct. So I don't mind doing a little bit, but I find that I have to do it a lot sometimes. And I'm also grateful. Maybe it's because I have work out this year. So that's why I'm getting those opportunities this year. Maybe next year I won't. So it's fine. I don't want to complain and all. Uh, But it is taking up a lot of time and a lot of my contemporaries are actually doing it. Like this seems to be the norm now. Mm. I have, I enjoy it. But also Coco, you don't delegate. I don't know, you can't delegate. Because you're doing everything, you're posting also on your own, you're figuring full everything, that's tough. Like I would have gone crazy had I had to do that. Because you have to do it on another level. I don't have to do it at that level. And I'm... Hiring also people, na? hey, makeup stylist, yeah. photographer, who are I? Yeah, but I really enjoy it. It's so therapeutic to me. <laughs> I it's don't so always ther- enjoy it. Because also I've been picked a lot on the way I look, right? Because people constantly have a problem. When I was bigger, my comments were like, hey, moti, pata nahi kya kya. Now that I've become this size, then also they have a problem. Kuch kha le, <laughs> kuch kar le. So I've realized that if I start living by what people want me to be, I will constantly be in a state of havoc. So now I've literally reached that stage in my life where I'm like, I'm going to do what I want. And that's really empowered me a lot. So that can be hair, makeup, films, people I want to be with, not be with, be friends with, declutter. I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to do what I want. Right, right. Because whenever I read an interview of yours or see an interview of yours, there's always these little Zen statements that kind of come out. And one of them that really intrigued me was, I have been blessed with better tomorrows than today's. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I understood that. So, and, but it sounds beautiful. Yeah. So, what is that? I don't know how to put it. It's, 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 there's a lot of amalgamation in that one uh, statement. I've had my fair share of challenges. I come from a very regular middle class family in Bombay. Uh, education has been a problem. I had to support my own education. Uh, Nobody likes to work at the age of 15. I had to do it to support my education and family. And I don't like romanticizing it either, but because you asked me this this question. Uh, so I've had my fair share of right. challenges and I've definitely had better tomorrows than today's because I always wanted to act. Uh, I also know for a fact that there are so many people out there who are far better than me but they've unfortunately never had the chance. How many people get an opportunity to be sitting here with the likes of these people? How many people get a chance to work with the people I've worked with? How many people get an opportunity to be loved by people? I did 10 years of television. The very first thing that I was told is, ha, TV actor hai, you know, nahi chalega. But I, I, 
I kept at it and uh, I've had better tomorrows than today. So mm. I'm really grateful for what I have and that is how it is. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It, with, with regards to work and, and it's not just professionally, mm. it's even personally, you know, I, I've lifted my family out of a very challenging few years. How lovely. Yeah, Good and uh, I aspire to do that. I sleep very peacefully. Uh, my parents are proud of me. Uh, I am married to the person who's, who's been there with me through thick and thin. People respect me for what I do. How many people get an opportunity to listen to people walking up to them and not saying, I mean, they say thank you for your work. I actually directly don't do anything for them as much as I do, but they, they, they come up to you for sure too. There are so many people who walked up to me saying, thank you so much for Shutu. Thank you for yeah. Manoj Kumar Sharma. And yeah. it's a blessing. Right. It is a blessing. How can I, how can I completely look over, through, over that? Can I disagree with you a bit over there? I actually think what all of you do, you do something for the people. Of course. Right. It's because, you know, a character that you do could speak to somebody. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and somebody could find somebody uh, you know, like that. They you empower not people, or, or you probably represent them. You or even just give escapism, uh, or whatever it is. Not just, but give escapism. Fair enough. Yeah. Escapism for an average common man, entertainment is escapism is, yeah. for an average common yeah. man. But that's not the kind of cinema I do mostly. So if if I have to sort of put it, well, you got to fix your dancing first. That's it. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> so, absolutely. I'm working yeah. on it. He's a very good but, dancer. But you know, if I just have to kind of add into your point, right? I had a very very sweet. Um, I was in a situation when Badhai Do released, I was in Lucknow shooting and we finished the promotions. I was watching the film in Lucknow and two things happened in that theatre. There was a group that was constantly trolling the film. And there was this one point where this boy got up and he told him, Who am I gay? And abused him. Kya kar lega? And I apni maa ke saath aaya hon. Aaj usse batane ki who am I gay? And I was sitting right there. And I was like, this is the impact that our cinema can have. Yeah. Then he saw me and he came up to me and he, him and his mum both were crying. And I was so overwhelmed because I've not experienced something this personal, you know, with somebody who's watched a film of mine. And he's like, this was my way of telling my mom that I'm gay. This was my coming out moment to my mother. And I was like, and, but, and during that time, there, Raj and I both, we were flooded with, our DMs were full. I mean, thousands. And there were many that we were also sharing. I actually had like fruits and flowers sent home. I was like, I don't know how they know where I live. It's a little scary. But you know, they kind of reached out to me because there was, they just connected with the film. Yeah. And it can really bring about such a big change because when they see representation or anybody sees representation, it happened during Dam Laga Ke Haisha as well, where I was just showered with so much love. I just didn't realize what the film meant to so many people. But till I till Badhai Do happened, I was like, okay, you know, as actors, we really touch upon so many lives and it comes with a lot of responsibility as well. Right, right. Just, just lastly too, I, I completely agree with your correction. But what I, I mean, wasn't correcting you. I was just like, sense, yeah, Whatever yeah. it was, like I agree with what you're saying. We actually work for the people. We are making stories for them. We are representing those people with different characters that we do. But what what I meant to say was, and also because I I I am not very active on social media. Uh, I don't have an entourage that sort of you know brings things to me or filters information to me. Uh, I agree with what Koko said. It's very time consuming. Everything the peripherals beyond acting are so time consuming. What I, what I meant was, how often do you land? And how often do you land for people to actually come and say, thank you, your film inspired me, or it motivated me. So that is what I meant. You yeah. know, you really don't know. Sometimes you hit the mark, sometimes you yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Then, but then for people to, and for all practical purposes, 20 years for a 36 year old guy, I've been acting for more than half my life. I've had the same people who still call me Sham Bhaisa from Balika Vadu who are going and purchasing my tickets. Oh, I mean, they they can actually, they've, they've seen me at the click of a button, but today they are spending their hard earned money. And it, my films are not escapist films. Yeah. So my todays have definitely been better than my yesterdays and tomorrows are better than my mm -hmm. todays. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Abhishek with Ghumar, I one of the movies I really really enjoyed this year. I really liked it a lot. Thank you. you. It took a very what I would call a standard sports template movie and did very very interesting things with it. And I also enjoyed the really dark sides it went into. What is this special equation that Balki and the Bachans share? I mean, you guys. Every time you get together, it's yeah. there's something that happens. Yeah. It's like, what is it? What's that chemistry? It's bulky, <laughs> right? Yeah, we just show up. Um, I've known bulky for twenty plus years. Um, in fact, the first commercial I ever shot was with bulky, and I've known him since then. And um, he's obviously a huge fan of dads. And uh, when they were shooting Chini Kam, we were shooting Jhumpa Rabu Jhumpa at the same time in London. So I spent a lot of time with him. Um, more to be able to hang out with PC sir than anything else, because you know anybody who loves cinema. I mean, PC Shriram is is one of the gods. So um, Balki and I always used to talk, and Balki's typical way of working is he he'll pitch a concept to you, and if he feels that you've responded favorably, then he'll go and write it, and then he'll narrate it to you, and then you show up on set. So I just think it's his brilliant mind. Um, I still remember when he pitched Par to me, which is the first film I did with him. He just came up to me one day. He said, "Hey, I, uh, I want to make a film where you're playing your past Par." <laughs> so I said, "What?" He said, hey, "I want you to play past Par." <laughs> so I, I, I didn't understand. I said, "This is again is Balki." I said, "Yeah, yeah, okay, okay." And then he went away. Six months later, he came back with the script of Par, and uh, Dad obviously said yes. Vidya was on, and I I didn't want to do the film, and um, you didn't want to do no, the film, okay? No. But then he obviously pulled rank and tried all the tricks in the book, and <laughs> finally made me a producer on the film, and um, then we did it, and that's how it happened with Gumar also. In between, we spoke about so many other things, and is is just, you know, is just he pitches you a concept, and then he comes. It's, it's all in his mind, and he's just this brilliant creative force, and I thoroughly enjoy working with him, but. Partially also because there's a wonderful comfort level, mm. so you know, it's it's. I think you're very privileged as an actor if you have a relationship with the director that you can lean on completely and mm. and literally place yours. I mean, that's what we do to a certain extent. I mean, you're you're kind of placing your soul in somebody's hands and saying, "I trust you to take care of it." And when when they reciprocate that with love and respect. Um, you'll do anything for that for that for that director, and uh, I think that's we have implicit faith and love in in Balki, and uh, he'll push back, he'll he'll argue with you, if, um, he'll debate with you, um, but I think essentially I think it's just that both Dad and I have implicit faith and love for him, and um, that's where it is. He's never you know he never disappoints. Right. What about the directors that you do films with? Where There is no comfort level to begin with. I don't do those films. Oof, you don't do films. Be... It's very important for me. Um, I don't know if that is, um, if it comes across brash or arrogant. Or uh, for me as an actor, I'm 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 severely inhibited. I've not had the privilege of working with them, and I hope I do very soon. Um, I've worked with her, and I'm I'm I mean I'm like a a, a typhoon on set. I'm all over the place. I'm messing around this, that, and everybody, you know, they they call you a prankster and this, and yeah. but it's not that. Actually, I'm 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 severely inhibited, and I have no problem saying it because I think that helps me overcome it. I just need to on set just be so pell out that everybody's like, okay, and then I'm comfortable to do it. I have to be very comfortable, yeah. uh, otherwise I can't. I get very shy. Um, so for me, be it co-actors, technicians. Especially the director, I have to forge. If I don't know them, I have to forge a relationship with them. I did a film um, uh, one two years ago called Dasvi. Mm -hmm. um, Tushar, who's the director's his first film, and um, I'd never met him before that. So when he came and he pitched the film to me, we spent almost a good year. Thankfully, it was happening during COVID, so we got to interact a lot. But it just took me time. I need to break that ice. I need to be. I need to be confident. Like I said, because for an actor, we 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 underplay it a lot. But at the end of the day, what are you doing? You're giving yourself up. I mean, yeah. in yeah. cinema especially, we're just mere puppets. At the end of the day, we we walk away with the, the with the lion's share of all the credit, but we're basically puppets. I mean, the directors are doing everything for you. But you, 
for in order to be an efficient puppet, you need to be able to completely submit to the diet and say, take care of me, you know, be nice. Um, I'll do whatever you ask me and I'll give it my best. I'll, I'll, you know, shed blood for you, but just take care of me and don't, don't hurt me. So for me to force that relationship is very, very, it's essential. Um, I, I've been very fortunate to work with the best of the best. I've been very fortunate to work with the most understanding and cooperative co-stars. And um, I don't know what I would do on a set if I was uncomfortable, if there was some sort of issue with a co-star. And you hear these, these stories in the film industry of actors that have been on a film and not spoken mm. to each other throughout because they can't, <laughs> they hate each other. How do they do I'd that? die. And what I would do at that, and I have no problem saying, I would, I would just lie. I would just like, dude, it's all done. I'm good. Let's get over this. And I'd, I'd overcompensate. Because for me, it's very, very important to have... And, and plus also, I mean, um, having grown up in this beautiful industry, and that's all I know, right? Um, and for me, walking on set or driving into a studio is, is like going to temple. It's, it's sacred for me. It really is. I think we're the luckiest people on earth that we get to make movies and entertain our audiences. Um, so for me, to do it, I have to be all in. I can't, um, I can't pull back and do politics and strategize. And, uh, also, I feel it hampers the creative process. Mm. As it's an so actor, exhausting. Yeah, yeah. Why are we wasting time doing all of that? I mean, like she was saying, you know, she'd much rather channelize her energies. I mean, in a different. I mean, she's talking about all these. Mm -hmm. I get very scared of all these stylists and all that. Mujhe bahut dar First of all, I'm I'm a ter I'm terrible at photo shoots. Yeah, same. I'm same. atrocious. I'm atrocious, same. and I realized this at, at the hands of great. my of my now wife. We were doing a film very early in my career. And we were doing a look test, and I I still laugh. I see those photos. I've kept the same pose throughout the day. <laughs> I'm just like this. And Ashwarya was, you know, tuk, tuk, tuk. And, prop hu, yaar. <laughs> and if you see most of my photo shoots, they, you'll see three poses and that I, I can't. I, I cannot be still. I need, I'm a motion picture actor. I need to be able to move. See. And to, you know, these things, are, so I, they, wearing somebody's clothes and I can't do that. Said, I'm, I'm stressing about going. The, 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 the most terrifying thing for me as an actor is the red carpet. Agreed. I yeah. sweat. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I will I'm be like, very I'm like, nervous. I'm like, how do I get out of here? Yeah. But you just said you love dressing up. Yeah. 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 See, dressing up is a different thing. But also, na, like uh, the way they shoot you and then they zoom in. And then at the start of it, I hated the way I was clicked. I don't see all that. Why I take that stress? I see full. guys have it a lot easier. You know, guys, we, we can own yeah. three suits. A navy blue, a black and a grey. And you wear a different tie and you're fine. You can get away with it. Uh, some 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 of some of our colleagues have upped their game, but uh, I think guys are are, are not are, are not as judged as the women are. Yeah. So I understand, but I, I, it, I, I find it all very tough. But like I said, it's it's <clears throat> I need to be very very comfortable um, with who I work with and how I work. And if there is no relationship, it's an opportunity to forge a relationship. Okay. No, but also like I feel like a film set is. Just as actors, we are so vulnerable, right? We have to channelize all our energies into any ways being somebody else. And if you and your co-actor don't get all of, how does it work? Like, how do, like, Vikrant and I have done a film. Actually, it was the same film that yeah, all of us did. Done, yeah. And if we aren't comfortable with each other, how do you just let loose? Because you're constantly at the back of your head. You're just trying to fix that relationship. And you're not trying to do what you're actually supposed to do. The comfort needs to be so much that, okay, if I'm faltering, I feel like, okay, Coco will take care of it. You know, because when, when you find that moment of magic, I don't remember what I do in a take. Right. I actually don't. I just do. And then when, if I'm asked to do it again, I'm like, um, it's how? Like, I just don't know. Yeah. You know, and even if I see it and I try recreating it, it's just never that. But when you're so disconnected from everything else and you just create something and that can only happen if you have complete trust on the person that you're sharing mm. that space with. Your co-actor, your director, like, you know, everybody in your team, you just need to have, like, complete trust on them. Only then can you be present, like, a hundred percent. Right. Like, all my co-stars are great friends of Isn't mine. filmmaking and acting for, for camera, I mean, it's, it's very paradoxical to a certain, I mean, it's it also, it's just a confluence of severe um, uh, conflict mixed with, I mean, you think about what we're doing. You're trying to be 
as authentic and genuine to a moment, say perceivedly between two people, but there's nothing authentic or genuine about that moment if you see what's going on around you. So in the middle of all this chaos, you're trying to find the authenticity of that one emotion to be as real. Because you know that that bloody camera is so close to you, it's going to catch it in your eye. But in the middle of all this, so there's all this fake stuff going on around you, and we're being very, I mean, it's, it's crazy. There's no wonder we're all a bit off kilter, no? <laughs> But you yeah. know, so what happens with me also, now, I am like, if supposing I have to read a scene, I am so conscious, but there's something that switches in me the moment it's just like, it's just the camera and like... Darling, yeah. you're very lucky you're working now. Yeah, yeah I agree. Like buddy. you said, the, 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 the difference <clears throat> in styles also, mm. performing the with the camera, yeah. you, I, I mean, we've all done films, I'm sure Coco's also, where you're doing, a, you're giving an OS Hmm. to a close-up of a romantic scene hmm. and you know she's holding your hand hmm. and saying you know Main tumse bahut pyar karta hmm. tumhare liye kuch bhi. and the whole scene now I'm the the close-ups yeah, on yeah. me and this is the scene Main tumse bahut pyar karta and you're like dude look into my eyes <laughs> and they're like no no if you look into the eyes you're looking cockeyed yeah. so look, can't, yeah, 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 look at, yeah 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 look at the I air or, yeah but you know so many times you have to act to a mark yeah, yeah. But I'm I feel so like you, I can you've do actually it. done oh, yeah, no, no, but you've okay. you do like highly dramatic scenes performing for the it it throws you off. What I act like, you know, so many times, like even in my films, I'm like, no, you can put a mark in. I don't like you can just cue me and I'll do it because Especially at times I feel like I. No, no, that's fine. If there's a mark and you're performing like there's somebody there, but when the person's actually there and you're looking at the yeah, ear, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they start but speaking. Have to do that even now. No, no, but then you start yeah. thinking, ah, just this shit. You start seeing, you know, it, 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 it's like I said, yeah. it's, it's such an unnatural setting yeah. Yeah. to do something so natural. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I just want to add one thing to what Sir just said. You know, there is, there is so yeah, much happening. Don't, please don't call me Sir. Sir, it's me also. Yeah, it's very strange. No, no, that's okay. I mean, he's plugged it seven times at least 36 and I was about to look at Coco and say... And plus, you established that you've been in Chev Arvo to die here, 36. So to stop calling me ma'am, yeah, it happened in my class. But she still calls you the character. Yeah, she still calls me Shootu. You entered Shootu. 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 Of course, yeah, he entered and you're like, Shootu. I message him also shoot yeah, yeah. only. <laughs> no, but uh, one thing which 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 uh, I was I was told by uh, Vinod Chopra sir, uh, he's been making films for forty five years. He told me filmmaking is crisis management. <laughs> At that point, especially if you're with the Vinod Chopra, <laughs> <laughs> so, not in my case, not in my case at all. But of course, we've yeah. heard legends of Vinod Chopra. Uh, but filmmaking is crisis management. With what mm. sir said, there is so much happening around. But at that point in time, whether it is your co-actor or whether it is your director, you know, you have to be there and make sure that you get the shot mm. right. Yeah. Irrespective of whether you might, you need not necessarily be the best of friends with your co-actor. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have to make you, it work. You have to make it work. You and have. it is crisis management. There is a shift of 12 hours. There is no work in 12 hours. You are doing 4 hours or 5 hours. You are doing 4 or 5 hours. You are doing 4 hours. उन चार पांच घंटों के बीच में आप क्राइसिस मैनेज कैसे करते हैं उस पर डिपेंड करता है आपकी फिल्म कैसे बनेगी एंड आई वेंट बैक टू माय टीवी डेज एंड आई वाज लाइक या ही इज राइट या ही इज एब्सोल्युटली राइट इट इज क्राइसिस मैनेजमेंट नाउ कॉन्कर्ड ना ही वाज टॉकिंग अ लॉट अबाउट कंफर्ट डायरेक्टर्स दिस दैट एंड आई आई वाज जस्ट कमिंग थिंकिंग अबाउट यू ऑल द टाइम बिकॉज़ You are an exquisite director. I mean, yes. I, yes. you, you, you need to make more oh. films. Yeah. By the way, I, there is a cool message. Like, what are you there doing? is a message that I have to bring to you uh, from Anupama Chopra. She He's says you have to make more films. Champion. But you have, have to make more films. <laughs> you have to make more films because and cast me again. Good, good. <laughs> no. You don't need to go very far. There's a camera, there's set up, <laughs> yeah. lights, yeah, three actors. We're all ready. We're all ready. We're ready. Coco, come on. But tell me one thing. Why don't you make more films? Because I, you said somewhere, I forget where, but I'm not a career director, I'm yeah. a career actor. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean? I mean, like, why, why can't you be both? Like Jodie Foster, for instance, you know, she's, she acts, she directs, you know, like... So I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like an actor primarily, by and large, you know, because also I've been maybe doing it for so long. Um, and uh, so what I mean by career director, it's not like I have to have a next directorial project lined up because I usually, luckily and hopefully, will have some decent acting projects as well. So I don't actually want to direct uh, unless I have something specific that I want to say. Now this might change but this is how I feel right now mm. because uh, 
at least till now I have also been writing and directing. Yes. So you know I want to if I am excited by a feeling or a thought or something I want to communicate you know and I feel it's worthwhile only then na, and the other thing is then otherwise and I want to do it small only I feel because as soon <laughs> as it becomes big now everybody is telling you what to do. Hmm. I don't want ideally you know so you should just quietly make your own thing and then you know hope for the best. You don't want to make the the next KGF Not or something. Not at all. Okay. And <laughs> I won't be able to. I won't be able to. I don't think so. Yeah. Anyway, those are two things. I don't even plan so much ahead. You know, I'm just like, I'm getting some interesting roles. That's great. If I find that I have something decent to say and I can, you know, many times you have to try writing a script. And after the first draft, you are only like, nahi, nahi hua hai. Mm. Nahi banana hai manja. So then, you know, you can abandon it. Whereas if you're taking on, working on commission, you're taking Correct. money, then you're like, are now I'll have to make something that I'm not sure of. You know, that also is a, it's a waste of time and effort and money for everybody involved. Yeah. But yeah, when they were talking, I was thinking that many times because, you know, working for so long or whatever, there are times when you've had to act with people you may not be so comfortable with actors, directors or whatever. Or maybe there's one particularly grumpy technician. Mm. You know, these things do happen. And one has to also um, uh, learn, one, you know, in the sense that I find it so important to be neutral. And that's uh, it's, uh, something you were saying, I was thinking, because a film set is often a very chaotic, uh, you know, environment with so many people on, you know, disparate elements at least you know, to the eye, to the layperson's eye or whatever. Very lucky to have been on film sets as a kid because you have become very comfortable with the medium. That's a great advantage. Yeah. And, um, and you know, in the middle of this chaos, uh, to maintain your equanimity, your focus, your attention, that is a great life skill as well. Yes. Mm. And to maintain that neutrality because if I, just before the end, it's happened to me, you know, once or twice you've worked with directors or a co-star who's... Yeah. You know, uh, upsetting you a little bit or something and then you have to do your breaths or, you know, yeah. smoke yeah, a cigarette or whatever it is you have to do. And, um, you know, it's also happened that just before a take, somebody has, like a director, especially when I was younger, has said something. And you're just like, so in the take, you're like, yeah, but Coco's right. feeling yeah, bad. Yeah, 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 and now yeah, my yeah. character is feeling something yeah. else. So you can't do it, you know. Yeah. I can't bear actors, technicians, directors who scream and shout. I set. also can't take it. This is I not get... the way to work according to me. Of course, many wonderful directors do it hmm. and you have to adapt and be flexible. <laughs> <laughs> but can I, can I just, exp I, I really loved one thing that she said and I really wish we all felt more empowered to say stuff like that where she's like, I just don't feel like, you know, we also tend to forget. When? When you said about, when you said, why aren't you making more films? Ah. Like, I'll make it when I feel like making it. Ah. We tend to forget in today's day and age where there's this perceived competition and all of that. We tend to forget that we're artists as well. Mm. It's, 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 it's meant to be a feeling um, as an actor, as a director. We must want to say something. We must also be given the liberty to choose a film because it speaks to us. It might not speak to a wide audience, but it's something that's very personal to us. We want to say this. We want to be a part of this journey. And I really hope that we find the strength within us as um, a group to be able to also work like that. I do understand that there are commercial requirements. I do understand we have to run our houses, all of that. Of but with that, let's also start empowering that side saying that, yeah, mujhe abhi nahi karna hai. Mujhe abhi ek saal acting nahi karni hai. I, I mean, Which I, you did. I, I, yeah, yeah. No, also because f for several reasons, uh, but one of them was this, that I was, I felt very, empty as an actor, I felt I was being very robotic about whatever I was doing. And because I'd done it for so long, it's almost pre-programmed. You can press a button and say, mm -hmm. okay, you know, but I want to do work that's making me feel alive. I want to do work that's giving me sleepless nights. If I'm just going to get up and sleepwalk through a film, I'm not, that's not what I came here to do. So as I think as artists, as creative people, and as part of a creative community, we must also fan that flame that allows us to do work when we feel like doing it. Because Essentially, that's also what it's about. Right. You know? Now, you, off late, uh, when we look at the films that you've done, which is Ghumar, Bob Biswas, Dasvi, these, these seem to be a conscious push towards doing a certain kind of film that, I don't know if I can say this, but maybe you believe in or you want to kind of put across. Not that you didn't believe in the earlier films, but I'm, I don't know how to phrase it exactly, but I'm hoping that you get it. Is that what you're going after now, that, that I want these special, specific things that, that, that a role offers me? Otherwise, I don't want to just do another Household 3 or uh, something else, you know, that's kind of, is that something that you're 
I'd love to do Houseful 3 again. I'm, you I'm, want to do Houseful I'm, 3 all over again? I mean, I'd, I'd love to do another comedy. I'm right. dying comedy because I'm, I'm very honestly very exhausted of playing these intense characters. Mm. But I think every actor goes through their phases. Um, I, I, I took a bit of a sabbatical, kind of recalibrated what I wanted to do, but more importantly, what I didn't want to do. And um, you come back and you start getting the strength and maybe because I've been around for a certain amount of time and you know, thankfully people do come to me for work and I have the, um, the privilege to be able to say, no thank you, you know, this is not something that speaks to me right now and choose the work I want to do. Uh, so I think it, it also depends what phase of life you're in. And I've actually found, I was thinking about this last night weirdly, there's a certain string that I found in the last like seven, eight films that I've done. And I, I, you'll get this, it's most of those films that I've done have had a child in them and my relationship with that child. Mm. I did a film with Basu called Ludo mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was, I think, his version of Kabuliwala, my story. Mm -hmm. But there was me and the small kid. Um, I did a web series called Breathe, which was about me trying yeah. to find my daughter. Uh, Bob Biswas is about him and his kids and his family. And it just had this family. I've, I've noticed that. This uh, is post factor, right? like after the fact. Yeah, I think maybe that's just the phase. You know, yeah. my daughter was was born, she was growing up. So maybe I just felt that I want to, you know, I, I don't know. Do you do you get that a lot as like the phase of life you're going in reflects in the kind of work you're doing as well or the sometimes. work that appeals to you? You yeah, know, yeah. Um, sometimes, sometimes when we are older, <clears throat> now we have children also. Yeah, so I think maybe well. that was it. But now I'm like, okay, I'll be but <laughs> now I want to, I really want to go out there. I, you know, I've not done a song in so long. I'm so upset. I love the song and dance, I'm, I'm nowhere near good, but I, I really enjoy that. Um, you know... Um, we enjoy it too. My God, I'm remembering Mantia Republic, which is just my all-time favourite film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mine too. But mine yeah, too but much this, fun. I love that and I want to I go back, I want to do something light-hearted now. So I think we, you know, I think we're very lucky that you get to choose work that, yeah. that really resonates with you at that point of time. And um, I really wish, if that's one thing, I mean, I was asked a question, by um, you know a, a, a junior colleague of mine a, a, a couple of weeks ago, um, we were at a dinner, and I said, he said, what would you like if you could grant one wish to a new age generation? Because my my nephew has just you know made his first film in nice. the Archies, Agastya. So we were just discussing about the younger generation and all that, and I said, I I, I wish that you all feel empowered to to do work that truly resonates to you. Um, I really feel would be amazing as artists if we actually just did the work that this is what I really want to say. So I just loved what she said that when I have something to say, I'll say it. We shouldn't feel pressurized. Yes, there's going to be other external pressures and that's part of life and we should do that. But coupled with that, if we felt strong enough and, and empowered enough to be able to do work that was intensely personal, it, what that personal is, is, is each to their own. Right. But and speaking of you, Agastya, there's also this thing that you were talking about earlier about what's changed because earlier when there was the launch of a star kid or whatever it is it would always be a big screen movie mm -hmm. like it would be like you know launching a special kind of a thing but yeah. now like all of them are coming on like OTT right uh, you know that that sounds that seems like a change in itself the fact well, that I, I, I can't speak for all the kids um, I was immensely envious of Agastya, my nephew, my sister's son, I is done. Um, yeah, and they're so prepared. I mean, when I was a complete greenhorn, when I, I was just excited. I mean, it was so weird when they were talking about getting dressed for functions. I remember I got my first film because of how I got dressed for a function. <laughs> I'm not kidding. There's a wonderful story. If you, if, Dutta, yeah, if you, you allow me, I, I, I've got a nice... So, I left my college and came back. My father was going through a bit of a rough uh, time financially. And uh, he had opened a company which had, you know, racked up some, a lot of losses. And so I said, I need to be around my father. So I left my education, I came back. And I became a production boy and then worked my way up to, um, I was literally a run, I used to make tea on set. And uh, um, my dear, dear friend Sikandar, his father, Gotham Berry, was brought in as a CEO. And I've known, Sikandar is like my baby, he was born in front of me. And um, Gotham uncle said, you know, get on set, start making tea. I said, why? He said, because start controlling the amount of sugar they use because the sugar bill is really high. I mean, this is the kind of small thing. So you went up from there and 
Then I became an AD and I worked and did production, assistant, all that. Mm -hmm. Then I learned a lot under Mr. Tino Anand, who I was working with. And at simultaneously trying to look to become an actor. And in those days, there was a lot of chatter that, you know, oh, Abhishek is going to become an actor. And, mm -hmm. you know, there used to be all these. In those days, you used to get the, the um, magazines once a month. I mean, now yeah. it comes yeah. every minute on. on <laughs> so. But, you know, that once a month, it was like, oh, am I going to be, you know, it, you have that excitement. Then once you become an actor, you panic because, oh, no, what scandal have they broken now? You know, once a month, that's it. <laughs> And uh, there was a lot of speculation about me joining and a lot of excitement, not because of me, but because of whose, whose, whose kid I was. But contrary to that, m people were just not interested in working with me. And I remember, I, I, I think I've met all the directors that could have been met. And they all very respectfully declined, saying, we don't want the responsibility of, of launching you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So what I, one, one day I was um, sitting with a friend of mine, Rakesh Mehra, who used to do commercials with my dad. And we'd become friends because I was, you know, I used to always be around. And I said, yeah, it's been like two years and I can't get a film and I'm getting really demoralized. He said, yeah, even I want to direct a film, but nobody, they all want me to direct ads. And so I said, you know what? I'll act for you. He said, yeah, I'll direct you. So we, this rebellious, <laughs> so we wrote a script. It took us a couple of months and we wrote a script called Samjhauta Express. And I was playing um, a terrorist in that who comes in search of his father, uh, who'd been taken away from him uh, as a child. So he said, you know, grow your hair and your dadi. So I grew my hair and my dadi. And we used to you know, go to Rakesh's office and he used to shoot on his, uh, you know, he had, he had a small camera, he used to shoot there. A friend of his, Amitasha, Sharu, was a photographer, he used to come and take photographs. And we were doing all this and prepping. And once the script was ready, I said, look, we'll take it to dad. He's got a production house. Let's pitch it to him. So eventually you got some time when he had some time off and um, anybody who's narrated a film to my father knows it's a very scary thing because he doesn't react. He just sits there quietly and just listens. So we were prepared for that. And I remember we narrated the whole script and um, he, there was silence afterwards and Rakesh, is, that's when I realized he's the world's worst narrator. So <laughs> just read his script, never get a narration for me. He will confuse you, which he did to me in Rangde Basanti. I said, Ye kya? I didn't understand why are they cutting from time zone to time zone. It was called painted yellow in those days. And I said, I don't understand why I And then he made Rangde Basanti. So then I, next time he came for Delhi, he said, yes, I'll do it. I didn't hear the script also. So um, just for the record, great film. Yes. Thank you. Film. Yes, Delicious. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it would have done very differently had it released yeah, today. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. very yeah. good film yeah. and extraordinary music as well. Yeah. And um, beautiful, beautiful yeah. album. Yeah. Yeah. So we narrated and there was a, what seemed like an eternity of a silence. Um, my father looked at us and he said, Boys, bahati bakwa script hai. <laughs> <laughs> These are his exact words. Yeah, yeah, get out. <laughs> we got really demoralized. And Rakesh went off and he was very upset and I think he took it rather badly so opened a bottle of some rather strong stuff and he just <laughs> penned down something and he said, um, next day he called me, he said, I've, I've written something and I'm in vengeance writing and I've written a script called Love Good it. Versus Evil, which then went on to become Us. Us, okay. Oh. And yeah, yeah. And he wrote it as like Kunnas. And then a day or two passed and I think my father eventually realized that I think I've, I've been a bit harsh on my kid, you know, poor chap. He said, felt bad for me. He said, uh, Chalo, come with me. And I said, where? He said, I have to go for this film fair and all that. You come with me. So that was his way of saying, it's okay. Now the stress in those days, film fair, when, you know, 20 years ago, you planned like months in advance. Yeah. Ki kya pehen ke jayenge. Make sure you're not shooting okay. on that day. See? If you're shooting, <laughs> if you're shooting, no, no, plan mane kharidna padta tha. Un dinon mein koi deta nahi thi kapad. Uh, if you're shooting, make the 7 to 2 p.m. shift so that you know dupair kaun dute. It was a big thing. The entire industry showed up whether you were nominated. It was just, mm. it, was a, it was the only time uh, film fair and screen were the only two big awards then before yeah. this plethora of awards. It was an occasion. It was a huge honor. So now I said, hey, what to wear? And you know, we, funnily, I mean, it's, I know it sounds weird, but I didn't have that many clothes and we couldn't afford to, because you know, we were going through a rough time. We were trying to be as frugal as you could be. And so I, I didn't know what to do. So I said, yeah, I mean, I had this huge afro of a hairstyle. So I, I, I took some gel and water and just gelled my hair and tied a ponytail. I had this big beard. 
and I didn't know what to wear, nothing formal. Mm -hmm. and I, I mean, I didn't think it was prudent to show up in jeans and a t-shirt, but I said, all right, so the Sherwani that was made for my sister's wedding a couple of years earlier, I wore that and I went. And I was sitting with dad, so I sat with him, I sat home. Hair back, dadi, Sherwani. It was the year Border had released and JP Saab won best film. And he was coming down the stairs and he came and met my dad because he's, you know, and said hello. And two days later, I was on set doing production work. My dad called and said, come home, JP wants to meet you. so much Anyway, whatever. And I obviously behaved like a complete moron in that meeting. But I asked him later on when he had signed me, he was making a film called Akhri Mughal. So he said, when I came down the stairs, suddenly I saw this character he was writing called Mirza Mughal, who was Bahadur Shah Zafar's son. Mm. That was, the film was about him. And he said, I saw, you know, in the Shirwani and this Dadi. And, and it was just serendipity, I guess, that, you know, couple of years ago, he me. But I had worn but my Sadi ka joda there. It happened not. to you? <laughs> no, uh, maybe to a small extent. But you know, you, you get a sense of that person and that's right. what the feel of the person. Like whatever, it's mm. it's helped, It's happened to me, it's happened to others also. I've yeah. heard of, yeah. you know, that. Yeah. And right. casting also for type or look or whatever. Right. So when you cast him, you know, like just because you're talking about it, what, what was it that, that said, so this I, is this person? You know, I uh, had seen Lutera. Mm. And I was very struck, and of course you know this, and I was very struck because I was like, who is this boy who I'm seeing sometimes, not very much of, and I'm responding to this character. I just am, I cannot help it. And I really liked him in that, and I had, um, I had that in mind. And then I, we were trying to unearth some photographs, me and my assistant Disha, and uh, we found some photographs which were very different, yeah. isn't it? Because yeah. there you were, it was a period film also. Mm -hmm. So the photographs actually we found online and all Instagram, us time pe thoda thoda tha, yeah, shuru tha, were not exactly fitting. And then I went to shoot Lipstick Under My Burkha, which he also acted in. And Alankrita, who's our friend, um, at that time, uh, you know, she and she knew about my uh, story. And she had also very casually in passing mentioned, she said, you know, uh, you might want to think of him because he's a very good actor. And I was like, oh, achha. So then I called him yeah. one day. I think I was sitting, you know, we were sitting around on set. Yes. And I Doing said... Doing the Mela sequence. Okay. Yeah. In uh, Bhopal, was in it? In Bhopal. And I just said, let me a little bit talk to him and interact and see a little bit. Yeah. And we spoke at that time. And uh, and then, you know, there was a, it was a feel. And a lot of our work is intuitive. Uh, yeah. Yeah, acting, yeah, directing, yeah. writing. A lot of it you don't know, you know, uh, and often your work reveals itself to you. And that's how uh, that uh, happened. Thank God. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. No, I mean it because uh, a lot, a lot professionally changed after a death in the Ganjman. Yeah. And uh, she was also the first person who actually uh, reached out to me after Lutera. Or, or the first celebrity who reached out to me after so watching Lutera. She's like... Uh, you know, I remember, I remember there was someone who told me I had just after Lutera, an agency had signed me and somebody from that agency told me, you know, Konkana Sen Sharma loved your work and she will message you. And I actually, I got your message the next day and I was, I, I was like, Arey, yaar, if she, if she's going to message me, kab aega message, kab uh -huh. aega message. Because and it he happened. had screen presence. It's sometimes you cannot tell what it is. I think, you know. No, he has immense, because I, I understand Anna? what you're saying. With him, even if he's doing a very small part, he stands out. He stays yeah. with you. Yeah. I think that's such a gift as an actor if you have that ability. And I always Thank say you. about him that he has a negative capability, a certain mm. hollowness to absorb, you know. This is, where the, Keats, the, real, this is the Keats statement that you'd This is the Keats statement. Yes. <laughs> Please say it again. Yeah, no, it's just that it's something that the poet Keats had said, you know, about negative capability. And, you know, as a young person, it had really st stayed with me and then I found it so applicable here. Where you, the ability to hold other things and it's when you are also a little empty, you know, in a way, to receive. Mm. So you can put yourself a little uh, behind. Right. Thank you. This, oh, one nice. thing, this one thing that she said really sort of empowered me. Uh, she said, said it at an interview I was not even a part of. My wife came up to me and she showed me uh, your statement. 
and i was like okay and then i went back and i read more about vibe bill keats and i i didn't i didn't know much about him uh yeah yeah <laughs> so so thank you just to wind up we've uh, what we're done know, why we're done we're done yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you have a flight to catch okay <laughs> no but but do you know what actually one of the things that you said is actually well i wanted to be just thank all of you because you said so much is so intuitive right mm. so when a bunch of creative people get together and try to verbalize what is essentially so intuitive it's it's so uh, i feel so grateful that that you guys are doing this because it allows people to kind of get an idea of what it's like to kind of be an actor or be a director or be a cinematographer or whatever it is yeah. because like like when i was doing that money ratnam book and we struggled through the initial chapters of the book because he said see i did all this like i don't know 20 30 25 years ago and i i don't even remember uh, yeah, yeah. you you you've seen these films just now to prepare for the book and you're asking yeah. me these questions but i'm like i'm yeah. totally lost when even i don't even remember half the scenes that that you're you're talking about and uh, that's essentially what his his thing was that intuitive so it took a lot of time for him to to get past that to analyze and break down to look back and, you know yeah, and analyze yeah, that's always yeah. an interesting thing to do so thank you yeah so that was that's that's really amazing so just to finish off and you know since we're talking about hindi films this year has been has seen the resurgence of the hindi film industry in a way now that it ever went away but you know people build these narratives that yeah. this yeah, industry yeah, is on yeah, top yeah. that industry is on top this that all that kind of stuff but this year it's come back in a big way a lot of films have succeeded but the biggest of the biggest films the ones that have found the most audience approval are the apathan jawan gadar 2 and animal they're all of a, a particular kind of film very testosterone big hero kind of kind of film it's too early to build a narrative but do you think this is something that's that's genuinely something that we're going to see going <laughs> forward it's just too early to say or is it a phase or how how do how does each one of you see it i personally think that uh, it has always been there that has been a part of our staple consumption okay it's always been there and it 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 will be there now connecting back to escapism an average an average indian family it's to go to a cinema hall watch a movie with their family is an event so they definitely want to take a break from their mundane lives and go imagine themselves or probably just disconnect from their lives hardcore machismo action has always been a part of our staple but having said that at the same time jo aapke 20 saal pehle naseer sahab ya 25 saal pehle naseer sahab karte the aur aur the films of parna ma'am made they used to be parallel cinema hmm. wo aaj kahin na kahin mainstream mein aa chuka hai aur wo ek they have their own takers as well the lines have blurred but uh, lastly like having said all of this i'm still figuring it out but i feel i feel there are takers for everything they will always be there the big budget for example an india pakistan conflict will always work uh, not largely all the time but it it has a certain sense of resonance with all of us it will work and if you make it decently people will watch it but whatever the medium you cater to uh but i think i think there are takers for everything there is enough space under the sun for everyone to just sort of sit and enjoy to wo to rahega hi you know it's it's there it's been there it will be there right yeah i actually i'm confused i don't know i mean all these films are supremely hyper masculine and i watched all of them and i've enjoyed them i've sat in jawan and marot cities and i've gone like i've done it I feel like because there are other platforms today that can service certain kind of films like the kind of films that I usually do I'm not sure if they're going to make it to the theater but I really I don't know I don't have an answer to it I know films of all kinds are going to be made I don't know if they are going to reach the theaters I also feel releasing a mid-size film is very very tough yeah, sure. finding its audience is extremely tough so you really need producers and studios that really go out with all conviction into making sure that your film reaches the right audience right right so even as an actor i don't know because fortunately i i do get like you know both ends of the spectrum even today uh but i feel like my choice in content driven films the potency of what i used to read pre pandemic to now has definitely reduced yeah I feel like 
parts written for women even in your commercial large pot boilers were a lot more nuanced than they are today right so i think that's something that i'm missing as an actor uh but i really hope that changes yes yeah. actually that that that's a point that balki once mentioned that it's not difficult to make the film but mm. the it's to get the film out Absolutely. to the theaters that's the fight he yeah. says Absolutely. in the midst of all Because these other kind of films so I forgot the question. <laughs> You've got to no, do like, better. Yeah, as long as films are working, I'm happy. Yeah. You're happy, yeah. That's, We're that's all here to make successful films. We're right. all here to entertain the audience. Uh, also, I mean, being a keen observer of and a student of the industry, uh, we also have to understand something known as a quantum. All right. I think Vikrant has given an ex amazing example of a small film with a big heart and a good film working. Mm -hmm. Right. but with all due respect i mean i'm not sure of what his budget must have been but it possibly could have been in single digits or 10 to 12 crores <laughs> a movie that's made on that budget is going to have a possibility of a certain amount of marketing it's going to grow as it should because it's a good film and that's a prerequisite we have to just make good films it's going to grow to do a 55 60 like it has done today it's not possible for a film like that because of the system to do 500 crores sure. yeah 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 all right he doesn't have those kind of theaters yeah. he doesn't have uh, uh, the the amount of people that he's managed to show the film to and to exhibit the film to are shown because it's on a particular amount of theater so his mm. occupancy percentage would be very high you can't expect him to compete with a jawan which is made on a budget which is possibly 20x what his budget was mm. he's going to get that kind of theaters and at the end of the day it's mr sharukh khan who's one of the biggest stars the nation has ever seen every film has their own quantum but if you see percentage roi i'm sure he's probably got the biggest hit of the year mm. yeah right each film has its audience um and i don't think we should worry too much about it the point is i think what 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 vidu and 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 vikrant have shown is that boss you make a good film it'll get released and people will watch it right films are doing well the industry needs it we're a immensely Absolutely. large industry we've gone through a very very difficult two years during covid where a lot of our brothers and sisters who might not have been as lucky as we were found it very difficult to put food on their table yes. we need films to do well you see world over there is going to be a template of the big summer blockbuster that's going to do well sure. a more intimate self reflective film is not going to do that but the point is what is your roi what yeah, is your yeah. percentage and we should be happy in that like i said if you go to roi he's probably made the biggest hit of the year right. Yeah. Right. and possibly i mean for a very very long time i remember a dear friend of mine made a film called bheja fry many years ago yes yeah. and roi was 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 the biggest fit film yeah. of the year so as long as films are doing well people are watching our films i think we should all be happy right thank you sir <laughs> i've uh, only seen out of the four films that you mentioned i've only seen jawan and of course i love sharukh um and 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 i also like the politics of that particular mm. film i don't think i'll really connect to the others as much from seemingly from the outside i'm saying but that's all right because they have their own audience right. and i'm not the tg <laughs> um i personally have never really been into spectacle very rarely even whether it's uh, you know in indian films or whether it's foreign films you know even when the brave hearts and the gladiators came on it's really i often get bored by a lot mm. of masculinity because um, I I'm seeing it as oh, a final yeah, yeah, final yeah. reaction I, I, I know what you mean <laughs> yeah i actually find it boring if yeah. continuously men are talking or fighting or shooting at each other i find it after 10 minutes i find it a little boring mm. and i actually like more interpersonal dramas having said that any film in any genre that's well made with thought is i don't mind <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it's a line like this yeah, like absolutely. so many different kinds of films can exist right. and i also don't really i like to watch the films in theaters but my own films 
even if they don't make it to the theatres because only very larger than life and big budget films are making it to the theatres, I'm kind of okay with that. I don't know about my directors and producers because I actually find it, you know, a really uh, interesting, intense and intimate experience when it's me and a screen. Like whether it's on a flight or whether it's my laptop and me, <laughs> it's a very intimate experience and I love it and I've actually cried and, you know, like on flights, I think something about the low yeah, air yeah, pressure yeah, yeah, or something yeah, yeah. I cry happening. a lot. <laughs> I'm yeah. fully into yeah, it, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Also to, you know, in case it's bumpy or something. So, yeah, I'm okay to watch it on any screen. I want people to connect with um, the characters. I want people to connect with the, the things, the themes we're talking about in the film. So, that's fine with me. Nice. So, net net, the takeaway is that Konkona hates Gladiator. <laughs> I do not like Gladiator. I'm really hard. <laughs> I didn't, never liked it. Oh my God. Okay, all right. So, with that, we end the session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank but, you for uh, having us. Yeah, it's, it's just lovely having all of you. And Thank thanks you. again. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. And have a great 2024. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Too. Thank you. GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Max Mania sale under 4.99. Rush to your nearest Max Fashion Store now.